Lord, we receive that love. Lord, we ask that you help us love you back. We like those children sometimes, and we love sometimes, and sometimes we don't love. But you still love us at all times. And I thank you, Father, for enabling us to do that. For you have given us your spirit on the inside. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit that comes and just hugs us and holds us and speaks from us. Abba, Daddy, Father. Lord, we bless you. We thank you for blessing us. We receive your love and we give you our love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right response. That's good. That's good. Let me, uh, we're already on Facebook for a moment. <laughs> Facebook, folks, just a minute, I got to do a little uh, uh, in-house in stuff, whatever. I, I forgot a while ago, we, we uh, had two deaths this last week. Uh, Chris Myrick uh, lost his mother in a car crash, and we prayed for, for them. And then uh, that's uh, their son-in-law. And, uh, and uh, then... Uh, Linda Skaggs. Lin I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, Linda Skaggs. Stax lost her husband this last week to cancer. And uh, so anyway, it was Saturday, uh, day before yesterday. And so please be praying for her and for the family. So we've got those things uh, that are going on. And Miss Brenda, who left just a minute ago, uh, got here and got sick. And said, I just, I can't, I gotta I got, I got go home. And so right now, Father, yes. I thank you, Lord, for the comfort of the Holy Spirit, but also thank you for the healing power of God. And Father, we say no to that sickness. And yes, to God's healing. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the angels of God that are in this place. I thank you, Lord, that they have been stationed here for a purpose. They are not here to stand guard. They are here to put the Word of God into activation. And so, Father, I praise you for the Word of God that activates your army. And Father, we release that right now and we call them to attention in Jesus' name. Amen. I do have a PowerPoint today, and I'm going to go to it. Uh, I want to talk to you today from Revelation chapter 8, verses 1 through 7. Uh, well, shut my mouth, okay? And so, Revelation chapter 8, change is coming. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, the book of Revelation. And the books have been, or, or the book is open that Jesus has been has placed in His hand. I'm going to give you that in just a minute. Uh, uh, that no one else could open. He was the only one the word that opened it. And uh, the, the the seals were broken. This is in the seventh seal. The seventh seal is broken, and this is what comes out of the seventh seal as what the purpose of God is laid out as it's give, been given to the Lord Jesus Christ. God knows what's happening, okay? And when He opened the seventh seal. There was silence in heaven for about a half hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel, who had a golden censer, and came and stood at the altar. And he was given much, much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of the saints, no, 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 the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of the saints. Your prayers are vital. Went up before God from the angel's hand. And then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder and rumblings and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. And then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound it. And the first angel sounded his trumpet. And there came hail and fire and mixed with blood. And it was hurled down upon the earth. And the third of the earth was burned up. And a third of the trees were burned up. And all the green grass was burned up. Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for helping me. And I thank you, Lord, for a word for us today. Not just personally but corporately and as a nation. And Lord, I thank you for that word. Help me. Anoint me. And you already have. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I'm going to look at some things uh, this morning in this passage of Scripture. And, and I've used this passage of Scripture before. It's, I think it's been a little while. But I've used this passage of Scripture before. But I want to say that I, as I talk about it this morning, I want you to realize that I'm applying it not to some place off future or not to the past. I'm applying it to right now. I've been asking, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm asking God, what are you doing? What are you doing, Lord? What are you doing right now? What are you doing to me? What are you doing in the world? What's going on around us? I, I need some answers with these. Okay? Hey, can I, ask, can I tell you something? It's all right to ask questions. And, and the right questions. And those are the right questions. But you've got to write it, ask it to the right people. I have a, I have a friend. And I was talking to him. And uh, we were talking about the condition of the country and all the things that's going on and whatever. And he says... Well, you know, I try to keep myself informed, but he says, I don't just listen to one channel. I listen to all of them channels. I looked at him and said, you're confused. Uh -huh. Can I tell you, don't listen to the lie. Okay. Listen to the truth. And God is speaking to me, like I said to you before, that he says, I want you in the Word more than you ever have been before. And I want you to praise me more than you ever have before. Those two things go together. See, this book of Revelation is not just a, oh, that, that's a futuristic book. We're writing all in things. No, no. It's, it, it, it's a book. It was, uh, that it is, that was, and will be. The, the first part we don't need to leave out is it is. It's just as relevant for today as it was then. It was spoken not to the world. It was spoken to the church. And we need to grasp what God is speaking to the church today. You, you know, I hear people all the time and they're talking about, uh, you know, this and that and they're writing the books and all that thing. Okay, I want to remind you of something. This whole book was written to seven churches that existed at that time. Now, I, I want to... Why would God give it to seven churches that existed at that time if it didn't apply to them? Oh, you can read it, but it, you know, it's not coming for 2,000-something years. No, no, it's coming right now. Can I want to tell you, Jesus has come, is coming, and will come. we got to realize that God is working in our day. We look around, you know, it, it's so amazing to me that I look around at people and they can see what the devil's doing, but they can't see what God's doing. I, I mean, I can go down the list and I can talk to Christian people and say, Oh, the devil's doing this. So the devil's doing that. Oh, I want to know something. What's God doing? That's right. Well, the devil's saying this. What's God saying? That's right. It's amazing what goes through my head. <laughs> I'm thinking right now, we just have a member of this church. You're not going to, this a long time ago, when we first started, we were going through some stuff in the church. And, uh, he, he didn't particularly like what was going on in the church. And uh, it, it was uh, irritating, but it was also humorous. He would come to me at, uh, uh, sometime before church and sometimes after church. And uh, he would come. It, it was never with a problem, but it was with a complaint. And he'd come, and his words were prefaced with this. And I, I'm thinking, I would never say that. He says, you know, I've been talking to the devil <laughs> well, that helped me out right there. I knew where the information came from. You know? And really, it was, he came with that. And I'm thinking, my goodness, I wouldn't preface my words with that. But he wanted to tell me how bad things were and what, what was wrong with what I was doing. But he came to me and says, I've been talking to the devil. Okay. I will tell you, I believe there's a lot of people have been talking to the devil. I don't want to hear it. And I don't want to hear it. And I'll have to hear it. But I do have to hear the word of the Lord. And listen to me. I, I, I'm not downhearted. Uh, I, I'm not worried. I'm going to tell you, I'm excited. You ain't seen nothing yet. In this passage of Scripture, no, no, we, we read over that. I've always wondered. I'm not, I, I, I don't have an answer for that. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. Only that... <coughs> Only that it's a <coughs> it's a half of a whole time period, an hour. I don't know why it's thirty minutes. 
But I, I, but I want you to get this in your mind. The Bible says, and I know some of you don't believe this, but the Bible says that there was 30 minutes silence in heaven. Can I tell you? That's a big deal. Because hell, heaven is never silent. Day and night it said, what? The cherubim, they, they, they hollered, the cherubim, they hollered one up, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The worship team is out there worshiping all the time. The angels and those that are redeemed are worshiping before the throne constantly, day and night. That it's going on with all of that's going on. There's trumpets sounding. There's music that's going on. It ain't a quiet place. But something, something was about to take place that God says, quiet. Everything was quiet. Everything was silent for 30 minutes. You know why? I believe it was heaven came to a gasp at about what God was about to do. Can I tell you? That's exactly what's happening right now. Hell, all of heaven is looking at it and they're not worried about it anyway, I think. I'm going to tell you, they're looking at it and said, man, what God's fixing to do ain't never been done before. Watch out. He's on the move. Let's watch what He's doing. Be quiet and just watch. Can I tell you, that's exactly where we are right now. In this passage of Scripture, what we see is heaven aghast. You have to remember, heaven is a loud place and it's loud day and night. What has caused heaven to be silent? It is over what is about to take place on the earth. It's the opening of the last seal of the book given to the victorious Christ in chapter 5. This passage is written to the church. God does nothing without telling his prophets first. The book of Revelation is more than an end times book. It is a book of worship and spiritual warfare. It is the plan to win. We are fighting from victory to enforcement. Change is coming. Change is coming. Now I want to tell you, I didn't get that off a piece of paper or whatever. I got it in my spirit when God spoke to me and says, I want you to know some change is coming. And, and hear this. I told you just a minute ago. I, I, I know when I get honest with you, don't get that honest. Jack, you don't have to tell them everything you know. <laughs> I, I want to be open with you, okay? I told you right now that, that uh, you know, I'm a vacation person. But now listen. I, I, there's times I come and I, I'm just wore out emotionally and physically and I need to rest. And I, I need to take a couple of days to do that. But a couple of days is more all that I get. Okay? That's all I want. Uh, I realize that from this very beginning, I got a prophetic word. And uh, I always, you know, and I'm not saying this. She's heard this before. You know, it's Jackie. I mean, she's used to my things, whatever. Uh, you know, I, when I first got to ministry and got going and whatever, well, really, yeah, anyway, first got to ministry and got going and all this, Jackie came as along as just a tag along. And y'all heard this story before, and I kept telling God, I said, God, you need to do something with this woman. Hey, <laughs> none of y'all ever prayed that prayer, did you? Or your husband, whatever. Somebody didn't do something with this man. God, what you going to do? And, and, and I was talking to the Lord about that, and I went with them. One, of the, one of the first prophetic words I ever got, I got, and I was telling somebody the other day, and I really appreciate that from Bill Hammond. Oh, excellent. And I got a word from Bill Hammond. And I was up there, and I'd been prophesied over his, telling me great things and all the things God's doing in my life. And boy, I'm really enjoying this. And Jackie was with me. I had to make her come. She sat beside me, and she was with me over there. And, and uh, Bill Hammond, it all take, always takes a woman. Bill Hammond's uh, wife just came over there and pushed him out of the way. I mean, right in the middle of the center, just pushed him right out of the way. And she looked at me and she said, Son, you've been complaining to God about this woman. She said, I got a word from God for you. God said, I created you as a racing horse. And I created her as a walking horse. And I put you two together for a purpose so you wouldn't run and kill yourself. She's there to pay you. <laughs> That's the word we got. I want to tell you, when you think things, I, why, why'd you do this, God? I'm going to have to quit talking. Thoughts keep coming. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, 
complain and give about Jackie and whatever. And, and uh, the Lord, uh, Lord spoke to me and said, Son, I think that's what you asked me for. Uh -huh. Hey, I'm guilty. I'm going to tell you, that's a great devil. And she does. She keeps me steady and whatever. And she's, and she's constantly there to put me on the track. I guarantee you, she puts me on the track. I tell her sometimes, you know, diet and exercise and all that. Diet, I do the exercise. Diet, and diet, and she look, I look at her and say, Jackie, I'm doing the best I can. She says, I'm going to tell you something. That's the same white thing Hillary Clinton says. I said, okay, I'm from you. I want you, we, we got those people in our lives that, you know, we, we want people to pat us on the back all the time, but we need people in our lives that will tell us the truth about what's going on around us. And that's what God wants to do. We want all the good flowery stuff, and we don't want this all this other stuff. We just want to, we, we just want it good all the time. Can I tell you, <coughs> Tyndall had, didn't have it good all the time. Jesus didn't have it good all the time. Paul didn't have it good all the time. But let me tell you, it was good all the time because God was with them no matter where they were going. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He says this about us. He says this about this nation. I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. This last week I was talking to the Lord and I, and, and, and like I said before, after my two days I was through and so I'm talking to God and I'm, listen, when, when I get too much rest, I get in trouble. Okay. David, you know, wanted a little rest. He was over king, went up on the, mat, on the, on the top and, and looking off him. I ain't gotten that kind of trouble, okay? I just want to tell you. But you do get in trouble. You know why? Because your mind wanders places it don't need to go. Are you listening? Your mind wanders places you don't need to go. And I got a call just before, well, I got a call while I was down there, the first day I was on vacation. I got a call from Faith Chapel, and uh, Miss Deborah, and she says, uh, uh, you know Mike Moore is, is going to turn the minister over to his son, and uh, we're going to have a celebration, and uh, we sent out an invitation to you, and you haven't responded to it. And uh, the lady told me it's closed, and it's too late. And she said, I'm going to tell you, Pastor Mike, won't you be there? And I said, well, go ahead and put my name in the list. And so I, I, I'm on vacation now, and it'll be uh, uh, two days after my vacation. I'll be there. So I went, and the whole deal. But while I'm down there, after I got the call, I'm, I'm sitting there and whatever, and I'm thinking about Pastor Mike. And all the great stuff is done. And I start thinking about myself. And I said, God, I, I just want to apologize. I said, I am so sorry for failing you. That's where I was at. And I heard the Lord say, who said you was a failure? And I said, well, I didn't. He said, I didn't call you to be my boy. He said, I want to tell you, success is doing what I tell you to do. And then he started reminding me, and I remind you, this church was and still is on the forefront of everything that's happening. When we started here, we fought. I've been fighting for 40 years. We fought for the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. We've never done that before. We don't like that. I don't care. We don't do that because God said to do it. We're on the forefront of that. We're on the forefront of worship and praise. I remember people coming to me, and I said, I'm so tired of hearing this. That's just like the, that's where the guy came in and was talking to the devil. But anyway, come and whatever, and said, why do we have to read them words off the wall? We got hymn books. We can read the hymn books. We, we got that dance. And women dancing and, 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 and trying to draw uh, you know, lust. And I said, I didn't know that. I didn't know y'all did that. Did you do that? <laughs> but that was the thing. Let's stop this. Okay, let's don't do this. Why? Because it's not normal. It's not, it may not be normal, but like I told my mama, is it in the Bible? Yes, it is. We went through that over and over again. We were on the forefront of everything. And I, I thought to myself, I said, God, why in the world? Brother Greg came to me one time and he says, listen, 
the reward of being first. I looked at him and I said, being first. That's the reward. Somebody has got to blaze the way. Well, I ain't never heard that before we came out with stuff. I ain't never heard that before. Is it in the book? I want you to realize that God has called us to be forerunners. Not to be in the back and see, well, they did that, so let's do that. Can I tell you something? We ain't been doing that. We're moving into something that's happening right now, and I've seen other people do it, but God moved us into it before, and that's what? That's prophetic words and declarations. We're living in that time when God is calling forth His church not just to sit back and be quiet. I did not call you. There's quietness in heaven, but there ain't no quiet on earth because God had not called us to be quiet. And there's, a, there's been a COVID epidemic where they put a mask on you and shut the churches down. Why? Because they want you to be quiet. The devil wants you to shut your mouth. You don't belong in politics. You don't belong in schools. You don't belong in this. Is what you belong. I belong in everything. Because the king owns it all. Oh, you don't need to be in government. That's one of the things I'm doing right now. I'm sending to pastors. I'm, I'm encouraging them to be involved in government, involved in what was going on. I told you politics before I left. I want to tell you that's on my heart. I want to tell you it's time for the church to speak up. This is not about Republican or Democrat. It's about godliness and ungodliness. And don't tell me you can, poll, you can vote for somebody that's ungodly. Amen. That's right. Not Amen. Well, I, I don't know they're going. By what they support. Amen. Come on, Lord. Whatever you stand with and whatever you stand for, it's who you are. Now you can say anything you want to say, but what matters is is what you stand for and what you do. And folks, we cannot be the people that okay evil. We just cannot. And God's called us to that. And I don't people I don't I don't think you need to do that. I don't care what you think. I believe this is what God called me to do, and I'm going to do it. And that's where we are today. But that's not just me. That's every one of us. We have got to quit being silent. And one of the places that we've been silent most on is where? In prayer. Come on. Listen, our now lay me down to sleep prayers ain't going to get us where we're going. We've got to hear the voice of God. Hear this right now. True praying. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my Father saying. True prayer is sitting in the presence of God. Listen, sitting in the presence of God and listening to what God says and then saying it. That's what Jesus did. That was his prayer life. He didn't go out there with his list and say, you know Peter's got this and James has got this and, and his mother-in-law's has this. No, no. He acted on those things, but he prayed about what the Father wanted to do. And he said, I only do and say what I hear the Father doing and saying. we got to be the same thing. We can't mimic somebody else or something else. We've got to hear the voice of God for ourselves. Now, I'm going to give you some things this morning. I'm saying some things this morning. You say, well, I don't agree with that. I don't like them. I don't care what you agree with in life. I, I was telling Pastor Mike, I, I told them they wanted me to come and give a tip. Now, listen. Yep. We had a miracle this week. They told me I got two minutes to say what I say about it. I did it in two minutes. All right. And I told them folks, I said, you know, they're all bragging. I said, I, I came here to tell, you know, tell the truth. Y'all been telling Is there video proof of that? Yes, there is. <laughs> hey, yeah, yes, there is. It's on his Facebook thing. If I make that cover. No, excuse me. I'm sorry. That part wasn't covered. I'm sorry. But it was, I did it. Because they had the time or whatever. But I did it. That, that was a good, that's a good point, though. You know, they are. But I, yeah, seeing is believing. I got you. You know, you know, but that's what it is. And I told, you know, I told them that there, I said, I am Brother Mike's thorn in the flesh. I said, Brother Mike has had different experiences with me, and I love Brother Mike. I think he's doing, he's done a tremendous job here. But I said, I'll give you two instances. I said, uh, I don't know, about 25 years ago, I called Brother Mike up and I said, we're, we're having a Thanksgiving service. 
down here, and I said, Brother Mike, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've been praying about this, and uh, I, I'm just getting tired of church after church. They, they get up there and they head up, and I, I'm not being ugly. I, I'm just giving my perspective in this whole deal. And they get up there and uh, uh, they say, oh, didn't you hear that? Our worship was the best. Our pastor preached the best message. I don't care. That ain't what this is about. I said, Brother Mike, I just want to bring some in from the outside and I want to bring you. And, and the Lord told me, just call Brother Mike and ask him. And so I'm asking him. Brother Mike, on the phone, said, Pastor, I, I, I love you, Rick, but I, I, that's not my calling. He said, I'm a teacher. I don't preach on special occasions. That's just not my thing. He says, I'm a, I, I'm a teacher and I teach. And I said, okay, Brother Mike, I'm through. I said, uh, you talk to God because he's one of me to call me. And I said, your pastor talk to God. And then he called me back and says, I'll be there. <laughs> and so he came and I told him, he, he, I said, Brother Mike spoke to about 400 white people. There were no black people there. And he did a tremendous job. And I said, I want to tell you, Brother Mike, my father-in-law was there. And that night, this man who really didn't necessarily like black people, he became his favorite television preacher. Yeah. What he said, Brother Mike's my, my, he says, he's my favorite television preacher. I said, life, what, what about son-in-law? <laughs> he said, you're not a television preacher. <laughs> Mike has his part. You have your part. And God wants you, especially in the day we're in, we must take our part. I can't be the President of the United States. I, I can't be this or that. But I can be what God called me to be. I can influence what God has given me to influence. And whether I have any other influence or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is what the Lord spoke to me and says, did you do what I told you to do? That's what matters. And we're living in that time. I'm going to tell you, it's a wonderful time. Because hear this, this is harvest. <coughs> Seed's been planted, harvest is here. God is doing great things in our day. And whether you believe it or not, oh, I'm sorry, this is terrible. <laughs> this, uh, uh, this election's coming up, things are bad in the country. I, I quit that mess. God's on the move. God's heard your prayers. You know what, you know what changed and transformed this? Was people praying. That, that's what it says in, that, in, in, in Revelation chapter 8. It says, why was the prayers of the saints? Oh, well, I'm not making any difference. Nobody's listening to me. Nothing's changing in this country. Don't you dare quit. God said, keep praying. Keep praying. Why? Because there's a time, and I'm telling you, the time is now. That's what happened in, in Revelation chapter 8. The time came. The time came for the answer and the prayers. When God says, I'm going to bring judgment that's going to change the situation. It's not going to always be the way it is. We're living in a day of change. We're living what? In a day of change. I want to give you the lead up. Let me, let me do this quick. The lead up. What, what is this path? Where did it come? Listen, I, I, I've done that before, but I'm going to tell you that I don't, I don't like that. When you just give one verse and then you just go off to preach. What, what's the context? What, what brought us to this? And here's the lead up that we find in the book of Revelation. First of all, uh, I, 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 the Lord... I, I just got it in peace, okay? So I'm going to give you the place. Revelation chapter 1, the place. Oh, look, preacher, you're you saying all this stuff. You don't, you don't believe we're in a bad place. I want to remind you that John, who wrote this, was on the Isle of Patmos. The Patmos meant the place of my dying. This is the end shot here. This is all the road. It's over. And I, hey, they've, they've killed all the other apostles and I'm the only one's left. And now they're putting this on me island to die. And this is the place. Can I tell you, wherever you at with God is a good place. I say it again. Amen. Wherever you are with God is a good place. I love the book of Revelation. At 144,000 uh, cubics coming down from heaven, that big city coming down from heaven, if you'll take that and measure it out, I did that. If you take it and measure it out, it covers, from where Patmos is, is the center of the whole Roman Empire. 
Now, I want you to get this. Rome is saying to John and to, and, to, and to God and to the church, I got you surrounded. And God says, I got you surrounded. I want you to realize when you think you're down, God says you're up. You don't know the place you're in. I'm going to tell you, some of the worst places I've ever been is some of the best places I've ever been. John was not in a good place. He said, I'm here for the word of God and, and, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ and for the faithful suffering. Oh, no, there's not no suffering in this. Yes, they are. Listen to me. The devil don't like you. Well, I'm just going to play nice and I'm going to be quiet. It still don't matter. He don't like you. He's going to kill you. Get yourself up and fight. Why? Because you can. Why? Because he's won. The place. I don't know where your place is. Don't know really where this country is right now. People say, we've gone too far. I don't believe that. But no matter what place we're in, God's there. And that's what God was saying. The second thing that I want you to see is the first the place, and then the second, the placement. Revelation 2 to 3. You know what? You may not think you're important, but God thinks you're important. And hear this right now. You look at your life sometimes and you fail. I had some failures this week. And I, and I looked at my life, and, but here it is right now. God says, I'm not measuring by you by your failures. I'm measuring you by my success. And, and here it is. In, in these two chapters, Jesus appears to the churches, and he speaks to the churches, and he speaks correction. Those that he loves, what he corrects. <coughs> here. If we go, I, I've been looking at this thing. If we're going to speak the judgment of God of what God's doing in our earth right now to bring it into order, judgment begins at the house of God. So it begins here. And it began in, the first, in, in that first century church. And God started with them and He showed them, each church, what was needed to correct it and how, how to bring it into correction and into the right place. And God says, I've got a word for you. But listen, as He started out the word, He didn't start with the wrong. Well, this is what you're doing wrong. He didn't start with that. You know what he started with? He started by, with them of who he was. And on every, check it, with every one of those churches, he's speaking to what they're facing, and he says, I am. To one church that was facing, uh, facing, uh, facing persecution and, and dead. You know what he said? I am the one who's dead and is alive forevermore. I introduced himself that way. You know why? Because he's wanting them to know something. Who I am is who you are. Who I am is who you are. Don't, don't listen to them. Don't look at your circumstances. I'm telling you who you are. Stand up and be who you are. We all need that correction sometimes. God's with, but listen, God's correction is always to mercy and to grace. He gives us mercy by forgiving us and grace to enable us to overcome it. Hey, if I could this morning, my granddaughter could do the song real well. I'd sing a song to you. Let it go, let it go, let it go. These folks need to let it go. Oh, I come back to God and confess this over and over again. I'm so sorry. Shut up. Once is enough. Let it go. God says He lets it go. Won't you let it go? I'm going to tell you, people won't pay some time. They hold on to two. It's hard. Uh, God has a hard time getting out of there. Matter of fact, He won't let it. He won't take it unless you let it go. That's right. Now, listen to this. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of them. Leave that alone. But with that is what? Life and grace. And that's what God has given us to us today. So he's putting us back. I want to tell you, he's working on the church right now. He's putting us back in the position and place. The third thing, position. Position. With John is taken up uh, in chapter 4. He's taken up. He's taken up to heaven. John is looking at about this. He's on Patmos. And these churches are failing that he's helped to start and all the things that's going wrong with them. And he's looking at, there's a lot of us looking at the earth. And John's looking at the earth. And God speaks to him and says, John, come up here. And when John gets up here, he finds out they ain't in charge. 
God's in charge. John sees God sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. I want you to realize right now, John saw victory, he didn't see defeat. Because there ain't no defeat in heaven. And we have been, listen to me, our place, we have been placed in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You know, you know I, I want to go to some heavenly places. I want to go to some places, uh, it, it, I was listening, uh, remembering some of the words that's been given to me. Uh, a long time ago, I heard the word of the Lord give to, give to me was, you're going to go, you're going to go where no man has ever gone before. I am, and I will. You know why? Because he's opened up the heavens. He said, why are you down in the gloom and doom? Why don't you come up here with me? My view is better than this, because see, you don't see the end from the beginning. So, we, we find there in, in, in chapter 4, we have find our position is in heavenly places. Then then chapter 5, we have find our person. Listen, I am so tired. I, I understand. And I have to talk to myself, but we need to talk to ourselves sometimes. Self, this ain't about you. Let me say it again. Say it. Self, this ain't about you. We live in a whole church culture and it's all, we're going to make you feel better, we're going to make you prosper, we're going to do this, and you need to go. All those things are true, but the focus is wrong. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Instead of me running at he, he said, the pagans, the unbelievers run after those things, but you run after me and the kingdom of God and my righteousness and I'll add the things that you need. I want you to know that's true. We need to realize that we serve a big God, but our big God is focused on one person. His son, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about him. John looks, and, 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 and you know, I just gave it to you a while ago. There's a book there, and it's a book. I'm not going to get into theology book, you know, but anyway, it's a book of the of the identity and the destination of all mankind. And the Bible says there's nobody worthy. Now think about that. It goes all the way back to Enoch, to Noah, to Moses, to David. Nobody, the greatest, none is worthy to open the book. I, 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 I may get this wrong to do, uh, forgive me, but in, in one of the non uh, conical books, uh, the book of Jubal, I think it is, and uh, whatever I was hearing, uh, uh, I think it was Brian, uh, don't want me to, any Brian, I think it was Brian, but anyway, he was talking, and he says, you know, in the book of Jubal, which is not Bible, but it, it is, uh, anyway, the Jews uh, received this book. It's, it's actually in the Bible. I mean, the book is mentioned. But, but, it, but it's not in our canon. It's not in our group of books. <clears throat> but in, the, in there it says that when Jesus was on the cross dying for me and you, the book of Jubal, it says that Adam came to Jesus on the cross and he was crying. And he said, please come down and let me take your place. I deserve this. I deserve this. And Jesus looked at him he says, no, you can't do this. You know what? He wasn't a perfect sacrifice. He couldn't do this. He said that Moses came. And Moses spoke to him and said, you are the true deliverer. Let me take your place. And Jesus looked at him and said, there's no man that can take my place. And I give my life for you. I want to tell you something. Jesus loves you that much. You can't take his place. You can't be a sacrifice. Why? Because he's the only sacrifice. You just received the sacrifice of who he is. I want you to know our focus has got to be on the Son of God. Not on us. Oh, I didn't get this and I didn't get that. And this is bad. Get your eyes off yourself and start praising him for what he's done. Okay? we got to watch Jesus. I got to go. The people. Chapter 6. He introduces the 12 tribes of Israel, the people of God. And he introduces them. Why? Listen, whether people think it or not, I want you to know you're important. You're vital to God. 
God says, I've saved a remnant for today. Just like you saved 144,012 out, out of each tribe. Every place God's got a remnant there that belong to Him that will not turn back. You're vital to God. You know what that whole group of people did? They worshiped God. You were worthy. I want you to know right now, He is the one that is worthy. And, but he loves his bride. You can tell This is the bride's time. Okay. I've done so many weddings, I don't know if I could count them all. But I ain't never seen nobody at a wedding get up from their seats and turn to the back and watch this gorgeous person come down the aisle. They don't do that. I don't know if you know. They don't do that with a poor old groom. He comes in with no fanfare. <laughs> comes sit next to the preacher. Just don't look dumb. <laughs> that's all fine. Oh. Why? Because everybody's focused on, I wonder what kind of dress she's going to have. Boy, she, I bet she's made up. She looks great. And I, listen, help me to want to say this right. I know there's some ugly women. <laughs> but I ain't never seen no ugly bride. I'm going to tell you, they can paint them up, fix them up. I ain't never seen nothing like it before. It doesn't matter if they're white, they're white or this white. It don't matter. Oh, hey, man. Y'all been to a wedding, man. When that door's opens, that bride comes down, everybody stands to attention, turns to the back, and they're watching the bride. Listen to me. It's our day to watch the bride. Listen. Our Savior's not jealous of that. He's prepared us for that. He said, I've told you all along. You've looked at her. You said she's a whore. She won't ever make it. But look at her now, what I've done to her. And I want you to know, He's proud of you. And He's going to bring you in glory. Not in defeat, but in glory. That's the position that God has given you. It is the people of God. It is the bride of Christ. The praise. chapter uh, Revelation chapter 7. Boy, you don't have to move, Rick. Chapter 7. We praise God from, from victory. We're praising God because of the victory. Listen, that church was in desperation. But they praise God for the victory. I want you to know right now, when things get down and things get rough, you need to turn them to God and say, Hey, I want you to listen to this devil because I'm going to worship God. That's why I'm here and I love Him and God's good no matter what. Number, last one, prayer. I want to tell you, sometimes the enemy will tell you your prayers ain't done no good. What changes have ever been made? Can I tell you, God never loses a prayer nor a tear. He goes along with the prayer. He said, I'm bottling up. It may not be today, but I will answer that prayer. It's a promise from God. Can I tell you, it's not only been this generation, the generation before us has been praying for this nation. And God says, I'm listening to your prayers, and I will answer those prayers. Mm -hmm. Now let me wind that. Let me Where are we? First of all, here's where we are. <coughs> the God of this world is judged. I said the God of this world is judged. John 16, verse 11, Jesus said, in regarding to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. Yeah. I don't say, oh, look at all them people. People that are pointing at the church and telling us how bad we you know, I didn't know how bad a terrorist we had in our church until it started turning on the news. We just terrible. That's what the world says about us. We're not worth anything. We're not we're not worth anything. We're the scour of the earth. Yeah, you ain't worth nothing, whatever. But that's not what God said. God says they're judging us. Listen to me. They have no right to judge me. They have no right to judge you. If God be for us, who can be against us? I want you to realize right now the judgment is, oh, well, this is what they're saying. But I don't care what they say. They're not the judge. What matters is, is what he says. You know what he said? He said, he's judged. The devil is judged. He's condemned. But here, he's called us to enforce what? He's called us to enforce the judgment. Psalms chapter 149. I want to tell you, we're not sitting on the sideline. We're enforcing what he said. Are, are you listening? God gave us, oh God, I got so much. God gave us authority and power in the church. 
You realize that? I just come into this revelation. I thought I, I knew it all along, but I didn't know this. Hebrews chapter 16, verse 19. I, I tell you what, I, I feel like I've warred to death. It wasn't all I ever heard about all my life was Peter's confession. You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's true. That gets us into the kingdom of God, but that doesn't manifest the kingdom. What manifests the kingdom is when he spoke and he said, Peter, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, I'll loose in heaven. Do you, we, we have that authority. You, you know what? I get out of the picture of me and the church sometimes as I talk about that. I know y'all, did, did you ever watch... Uh, uh, Barney Fine, you know, little skinny. I'm not Barney Fine. Little skinny guy. Andy Griffith, you know, sheriff. He's the deputy sheriff. He got the one bullet he carries in his in his pocket, but he can't put it in his gun. Got to carry his pocket. And you remember he had he had a because they're taking care of the town. He had a wad of keys that he put right here. And I, I, you know what? When I hear that about the church, I think about Barney Five. We've been carrying around them keys all the time, but we have no idea what they open. Can I tell you something? God's got the keys off the key ring right now. And God's showing us the doors that will open. And I'm going to tell you, God's had a glorious church, and He's put the bullet back in our gun. And I'm going to tell you, those that are coming against us better be watching. Oh, He's talking about violence. That'll shoot people. No, I'm not. Don't you dare. Our weapons are not carnal. Our weapons are mighty. But they haven't seen those mighty weapons yet. But they, they, they're coming. They, they're in here. Shortly they're coming. Can I, can I hold it? You've got authority. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It's time that we realize it took our authority. The second thing, Revelation is the book of warfare. Warring with the prophecy that you have. Listen to me. Take hold of the prophetic word. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them you may fight the good fight, holding on to the faith and good conscience. Some have rejected these and so have shipwrecked their faith. It's not about what I say. What God? What has God promised? What has God said? And we need to speak what God said, not what the news media said, not what the government said. What God says. God has given us a prophetic word out of our mouth that God has placed on the inside of us. Hear this right now. Moses, it says, was God's mouthpiece. He was the prophet. He went to the greatest military power of his day went to Pharaoh, its leader, and he put his finger out and he says, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go. Are you listening? It's time we said, Let my people go, Brenda. We haven't been called to be sick and downhearted and all this other stuff. We've been called to rejoice. And we've got to start using our mouth. Where are the keys at? In your mouth. In your mouth. Go back. Let, let me. We got to the message here. You got to worry about time. No, I got to. I, I want you to get this, though. I, I don't want you to be here just because you got to be here. I want you to get this. Hear, hear this, I heard this in my heart. When we say binding and loosening, oh, isn't that a perfect word? But hey, let, can I give you just something practical? When a sin comes to you, or the devil comes to you, or a sickness comes to you, I heard the Lord say, just say no! When you see things on the news media and you, or, or whatever's happening in this country and whatever, you look at it and you don't just take it to, oh, look at this country. No! You will not. No! You won't stand. No! You won't. Oh, we, listen. Let me, let, me, let me hear you know this one. No! 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 no. Some of you lost your, your, your children back. 
I said no. I said no. You know how to say that no. Say no. I'll buy what you buy. Most of the church today say, please don't do that. No, you will not do that. And then we, we the devil comes to us and says things to us like, oh well, you just you're sick now, I know you got cancer. You know, I know God says he'd heal you, but that ain't gonna happen. You need to look at him and say, Yes! I believe God. I release healing in my life. Say the yes and the no and mean it. Yes. Don't don't this this pitter patter around. Let's mean what we say about God in our own lives, in our country, in the church that we have. God has called us to war with the prophetic words, the promises of God that He's given us. Let me, the Lord is shutting the mouth of the dragon. I'm going to give you that in just a second. The Lord is going to shut the mouth of the dragon. Can I tell you? Revelation 12, 15. Then from his mouth, that's what the serpent does. He has a big mouth. From his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away from the torrent to, with the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening his mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. There's a lot of spewing going on. But don't worry about it. God's fixing to shut the mouth of the dragon. Last of all, stand up and change. Stand up. Change is here. Now, let, let me close with this. I'm going to give you some things. I know some of you, I, I give stuff to you, and you, I don't know what you do with it. I hope you do something with it. But listen, I'm not just talking for me. When I get something, I really believe it's the word of the Lord, and that's why I give it to you. Can I tell you two people you need to be listening? Well, a lot of people you need to be listening. I'm a, there's a prophetic flow right now. That's what's happening, and I'm going to show you. Prophetic flow that's happening right now. Okay. But there are some folks you really need to pay attention to. One of them is Dutch Sheets. By the way, I went to your Dutch this week, went on online on YouTube, and guess what? He ain't there. You know why? YouTube put him in jail. For seven days, he's offline. That made me so mad and my teeth hurt. You trying to shut the mouth of God, and you won't shut the mouth of the mouth of a president who says worse than that? I'm telling you right now, we're living in times that must have change, and they are coming. They are coming. Took him offline. Put him in Facebook, uh, uh, not Facebook, uh, YouTube uh, 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 jail. jail in, in the whole thing. He can show old things, but nothing new. Uh, show old things, but nothing new. Oh, shut their mouth. But hey, I got the app, his app. And so I went to his app and listened to it, and it was right on target. And if you didn't get it, it was on Friday, and it's right on target because that's what the Lord's been speaking to me, and that's what I'm hearing God speak through everything. So I'm going to give it to you close, okay? Dutch Sheets was at Tim Sheets Friday night, and Friday night was aired, and Friday night was at Oasis Church. All you got to do is punch in Oasis Church, and it will pull it up. And it should be right at the top. It's this, uh, the, the uh, stand, uh, stand, I think it's yeah, I think he has a prophetic uh, uh, Friday night ever before. But anyway, and I, I was trying to think what it, geez, I think it's a standard. Anyway, look it up. It'll be uh, right at the top. You know? The standard is right at the top, and it'll be right at the top. And that's the name of the conference that's there, but it'll, it'll be right at the top. And it was Friday night, and uh, they had people there that some of you mentioned before, but I'm going to mention to you, you need to go to it. You know, I'm telling you, don't, don't, don't sit on this. Go to it. And it had, first of all, Tim Sheets. And he told about how God's working angels. It was tremendous. And God was moving in our land. And he's, a, and he's doing something right now. Not something later, but he's doing it right now. And it's just, I won't get into his because that's not what I want to focus on. And then right behind him is a fellow named, uh, uh, he's in uh, uh, ten, uh, Tennessee, Memphis, ten, no, Memphis ten, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And his name is Kent Christmas. Can't, can't miss that name. Kent Christmas. And Kent gave up. He, he says, well, uh, Tim says, I'm through. Uh, so I'm going to call up Kent. He called him up. And I'm going to tell you to do it. I don't mind even explain the word. It's a word of the Lord to this nation and to God's people. 
And I'm going to tell you, wow, what a word. And then after that was through, Jim said, last of all, my brother Dutch is coming. He's coming to share with me. And Dutch came and shared partially of what was online with, with this. But then he went into detail. And, and what was online was Exodus chapter 14. That's what the Lord's been speaking to me. We got our backs against the wall. The sea's closed in front of us. God says there's a red wave coming. Now, I ain't giving it. That ain't politics, political. There's a red wave coming. It's changing now. It's not, not the future. Be, be still. It's changing in the whole world. Believe it, okay? And the whole wave, red wave coming. But we got our backs to the wall. And you got to see in front of us. And Dutch Sheets was explaining. Explaining. I ain't got time to go in there. Detail. He's explaining about a dream that was given to him by a good prophetic friend, uh, Greg Hood. I, these people, these prophetic people that have these dreams, I said, oh, God, where do they get these things? I, I mean, it's cinema color. I mean, it, 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 I, I just, I never had a dream like that. <coughs> but he gave, <coughs> he gave Dutch a dream at the first of this year about what was going to happen this year. And everything that he's prophesied or everything was in the dream has happened. And, and God showed him a, a baseball t uh, uh, game. And in the baseball game, uh, uh, the church, the Ecclesia, was playing a, a baseball game. And it was the last inning. And, and the devil was ahead 22 to 20. Mm -hmm. But we had a bat. We came into the bat. And the pitcher's over there and he's making fun of them and, and cursing them and all that. He said, you've nothing to nobody. You ain't going to win. You, you, you can't win nothing or whatever. You ain't going to win nothing. This is over in that whole deal. Talk, just talk them in that whole deal. So anyway, they went through the batters. I'm not going to go through the batter. Each one had a significance of the batter. And each one of them, there were four batters, and each one of them had a quarter uh, in, uh, in, in the year. Okay? One quarter of the year. And the first quarter, the batter came up. And the first quarter was that on a religious spirit. And, and that pitcher on making fun of that batter or whatever. And he hit. He didn't hit much, but he got on first place. And so the batter was up. And that batter, I, I, I ain't going to all that. I can't, don't have time for all that other stuff. But that batter, that, that was that religious spirit. And I don't know if you remember it or not. But back in the first of the year, there were a multitude of uh, high up Christian leaders that failed. What's a bad thing? It is a bad thing, but it's a good thing. God says, I'm going to get rid of that religious spirit that's in the church. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to have a pure flow that comes through that. And that's exactly what took place that second first quarter. The second quarter was that of strength, and I, I'm not going in that, and not going in that. But the, the primary thing was that God says, I'm going to give you a victory over something you didn't think you could have victory over. And what happened? Roe versus Wade got knocked down. And the devil's over there saying, well, he threw, listen to me, he threw everything that he could at that to keep it from happening, but could not stop it. Why? Because the church prayed. Mm. And then the third quarter, one, one ran right now. The third quarter. It had a, it had a woman battle. And, and when Dutch gave it the first of the year, he didn't give her name. He did the other night. He said, I'm going to give her name because now I got permission. I hadn't asked her before. But I asked her if I could use her name, and she said, absolutely. And it was Jane Hammond. I don't know if you know Jane. Jane Hammond is high up in the prophetic, uh, in the whole deal. Uh, that's Bill Hammond's uh, daughter-in-law in there. They have a tremendous church. But anyway, known for the prophetic. And God spoke and says, this time is the time of the Holy Spirit and the prophetic word flowing out of the church to bind the enemy. And Dutch said, I called Jane and told her, and she gave me permission. And then she says, she called me this last week, and she told me, I need you to be here Sunday, today. Because the end of the month is coming, the end of this quarter, and I want to make sure that we declare everything that needs to be declared before the end of the month. And he's there today, and I believe, Lord, that's exactly what's going to take place. I've never seen the flow of the prophetic like it is in this last quarter yeah. that we just had. And last of all, the last batter that got up was going to get up and Dutch or, or 
Dutch is the coach, and Dutch gets a call. This is Dream, gets a call from the uh, box up there. And, you know, the, what is that? Huh? No, 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 this is the, the box where the important people are. Skyboxes. Huh? Skybox. Thank you. Uh, that's the word I, that was it. That skybox. It came from the skybox. And he got a call. And, and the guy handed him the phone and said, Dutch is for you, it's the boss. God's called him. And he says to Dutch, he says, that battery's not going to bat. said, you're going to have a pinch hitter and it's going to be you. Get this to me. God does unusual things. You would think, well, that's the coach. You don't bat. But that's not what God said. And, and Dutch says, God didn't call me because of Dutch. He called me because of what I represent, and that's the praying church. Are you listening? That's the praying church. That's my calling. That's what I represent is the praying church. And he says, yes, sir. And he says, I looked over there and uh, at, at uh, Greg Hood. Just the, he was playing ball. I looked over at him and says, uh, I want you to go to my box back there and get my bat. So he went and got his bat. And what his bat was, it came out and had a, written on it, communion. God's not going to do this without us. He says, I got communion with you. I got covenant with you. And we're going to do this thing together. We're going to have communion. And it's going to be the communion of God with the prayers of the saints that's going to knock this thing out of the ball. He came up the bat. Let me do it with you. Came up the bat. First throw. Came across the plate. Oh, excuse me. First throw. It went out of the stadium. They threw it all the way out of the stadium. And it hit the bus, their, their ministry bus. It hit out there. I ain't going into all that, but it's a prophetic word in that. Hit the bus out there and put a den in it. But, but anyway, uh, the, the umpire in the back said, Strike one! Went out of the stadium. Pitcher starts laughing. Winds up to throw the second pitch. And he throws the second pitch. And this time, uh, uh, the pitch doesn't even again come across the plate. It goes all the way into the dugout over there and hits one of the players. But the player's not hurt. He's just hit. I ain't got time to go into explanation for that, but you can just take it at whatever. And now it's, and, and then the umpire says, strike two! Yeah. Dutch said, I put down my bat and I looked at the umpire and pointed my finger and I said to him, I said, you're fired. Mm -hmm. You're a liar. You've been a liar to begin with. And, and, and know this, he was wearing a, 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 pharmace, a, a pharmaceutical coat. He said, you're fired. No more lies from you. You're out of the game. Now, I ain't going into all that. And, you know, a lot of meaning in that, but whatever. You're fired. And he says, now, we're going to put in the right umpire. I'm calling Michael into the game. Listen to me. Michael, the archangel. I would call it Mark. Mark, uh, Archangel stands for God's people. He's going to come and call the last one. Okay. He's really mad now. He looked at the picture and he says, I finally recognize him. It's Baal. Sephel. That's the one that was hit. What? When the children of Israel were going to cross the Red Sea. And they camped in front of this Egyptian god. Pharaoh said, hey, I got him now. This god's powerful. He's the god of the sea. He's the god of the wind. He's the god of war. Hey, they're meat now. They belong to me. Now listen, why did Pharaoh do some of the stupid stuff? Because he, he his god was there. And when the sea opened up, he thought it was his god that opened the sea. So he went after the children of Israel. Are you listening to me? The sea wasn't open to drown God's people. It was open to drown the devil's people. Mm. Can I tell you? There's a victory coming like you ain't never seen before. And God says it's going to be in this last quarter. I don't know how that's going to turn out. I don't even go into the political. I don't want that. Because listen, politics is not going to save us. Jesus is going to save us. God, that, that's what, they were brought to the Red Sea because there wasn't nobody else to save them but God. 
we got to understand, there ain't nobody can save us but God. There ain't nobody can change your situation but God. There ain't nobody can heal you but God. I want you to know, we must have Him. He looked over. This is it. He looked over in, into the dugout, and, and Greg Hood, the prophet, was there. And the uh, judge says, he says, well, what do I need to do? Because one of them had bunnied, whatever. He said, Greg, what do you think I need to do? Greg hollered out and said, hit a line drive right for the pitcher's throat. Because he says, I'm shutting his mouth, and he won't talk anymore. And he hit the ball. The pitcher threw it, snared on it. I ain't going to get it. It's a great story. You need to, I've done, done no good to it at all. You need to watch it. And, deal. and he drove the, the line. It hit him in the throat. It knocked him out. It took him out of the game in that whole deal. I want you to know right now, all these people that have been propagating and speaking and talking and mouthing about this and that, the church and God and all that, they fixing to get their due. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're going to see a turnaround from lies to truth because God's going to shut up the lies. I want to give you a word that I believe the Lord gave me. Well, who are you? That's, that's a good question. We'll see. Okay. I believe the Lord spoke to my heart and He says, Son, I'm going to send a storm to Facebook. And I'm going to shut it down and it'll cost them millions to put it back up. But it, will, it, it, won't, be, it won't be something that man does. It'll be something I do. And he says that it'll be a sign of all those other principalities in power. You're next. You're next. I want to tell you something. I believe with all my heart that word's coming back. Now, if it had been me, I'd have talked about you too because I was bad at them. But that's not what God said to me. I want you to know right now, God's on the move. Change is coming. Stand your feet to me. Change is coming. Change is coming. What do we do? We believe God is believing and keep on believing and praying for a position from the position of victory. Ask God to judge you first with mercy and grace so you'll be ready. Ask God about what you see and what you're to do about what you see. Listen to what He says. Speak and declare what you hear. Move forward in what He has called you to do. I can't do what Mike Moore's done. I can't do what these other people are, or Jason's doing. I can't do what the person down the street. I've got to do what God called me to do, but that's not with just me. That was with, with all of us. This is the last evening. We've got to get in the game. You can't sit on the sideline anymore. God has called you to do what He's called you to do. Nothing less and nothing more. That's between you and God. Call a 40 day fast. Oh, don't, don't say that. It's not a fast of food. It can be. I want it to be a fast of something you really like. 40 days starting Friday. That's the 30th. That's 40 days before the election. Fast starts this Friday. Okay? And, and, and here's what I want you to do I want you to ask God, what is it the thing? Don't make it hard. What is it the thing that I enjoy every day or just about every day? And I'm going to give it to you. And when I give it to you, I'm going to ask you to remind me with that thing that I'm supposed to pray when I think about it. When I'm thinking about what I gave up, I'm supposed to pray for a great revival and a turnaround in this nation. Great revival first and a turnaround in this nation. And we're going to be playing it for 40 days from Friday. We're going to play it all the way up through the election. God's on the move. And God works for His people. It's time to run the race like we've never run it before. Now hear this right now. I am not asking you to not eat for 40 days. Please eat. Okay? What I'm asking you is what God wants you to do in this. Speak to God. He'll tell you. And some of you will. It'll just have to be a you know, hard thing. No, it's not. I 
I've got something that I do just about every day. It's not a big thing. It's one of the things that I'm giving up. But I guarantee you, I'll be reminded every time I go that this time to pray and believe God for the victory you see. And I tell you right now, change is here. Father, I thank you for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you sealed your word. I preach words, don't you? Yeah. My words fall to the ground, but Father, your words never fall to the ground. God, I praise you, Lord, for giving us the word of the Lord to speak that word through us as the church of Jesus Christ. And Father, for showing us who we are and what we are. And Father, this is our finest hour. This is our finest hour. Father, we're not dependent on, on, on we're not dependent on government. We're not, we're not dependent on people. We're not dependent on uh, circumstances. We're dependent on you. God, I praise you. Promise you'd come through. And you're coming through through us. And I believe for that right now. And I just release it to those that are watching me and those that are online. Father, I praise you, Lord, for touching them and ministering through them. Lord, that we'll be involved now until the end of the year more than we ever have before. And I just release that in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to look at somebody as you go. There will be change. Yes, there will be change.